Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Thank you. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Dragon Blitz. I'll give you guys a chance to introduce uh, yourselves. Uh, hi, I'm the Black Tastic. Hi, I'm VB, commentating another game I don't run. But, you know. <laughs> hi, I'm Rom Scout, commentating a game I do run sometimes. <laughs> uh, we're going to do, be doing All Bosses, All Relics, Save Richter, uh, shortened to ABRSR. And yeah, this category is great, and I'm ready whenever you guys are. Do, do we just do our own? All right, cool. Three, two, one, go. Woo! All right, starting off, uh, we're playing as Richter, which isn't the main character of the game, but it's fine. Says you. <laughs> uh, here I collect 41 hearts because it's going to allow me to start the game as Alucard with a uh, neutron bomb. Were you trying to clip out of bounds there? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's certain. You never know. <laughs> you can clip out of bounds there, but I would never go for that in a marathon. Never. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is a pretty standard thing you'll see in most Symphony of the Night runs, but um, by collecting over 40 hearts, uh, he's going to end up with a Neutron Bomb when he starts the game as Alucard. And then by ending with zero hearts, he's going to have a Heart Refresh, both of which are used for glitches later on. Yeah, that wasn't the best Dracula fight. Um, it's kind of luck-dependent whether you kill him quickly or not. Uh, we go for the uh, glitch called Damage Stack, where you throw the Holy Water as you're doing the Hydra Storm, and it essentially is like a pseudo-random chance of just doing damage on every frame. So if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't save that much yeah. time. Although uh, the Clock Rush actually does matter in this category, unlike other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're really, really good, and then it doesn't matter again. <laughs> but I guess we'll be explaining that a little bit later as it comes up. Yeah. Um, so he's canceling the back dash with the shield. Uh, it's called shield dashing. Um, another thing you'll see in most speedruns of this game. Um, and then he's going to be setting up uh, an exact pixel here that he needs uh, in order to uh, level up using the neutron bomb at the same exact time he begins to scroll the screen. Uh, this ends up making the screen position completely mess up when he goes through the transition. And uh, I, I guess get it. He, missed the, he missed the pixel, though. So. Wow. It's faster to just That's reset, okay. honestly. That was the warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's honestly faster to reset at that point because keeping your armor saves so much time over not yeah. having it. I mean, really, it's the shield that we're, we're looking to keep. So, yeah, we get to see all this again. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the main character, Richter. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to show off Richter one more time. <laughs> I, I think he them. has he has more air or uh, screen time than uh, Alucard so far, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Please die. Yeah, that was like the worst fight possible too. Uh, but yeah, it's you have to set up within like a one or two frame window for the for the. Um, reverse shift line to work, which allows us to keep all of our equipment. So it's really unfortunate that, like, I missed the setup. But like I said, like, restarting is actually yeah. faster than trying to play through the rest of this category without the shield. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when we used to time it for all bosses, when that was first becoming a skip for it, um, the shield saved, like, three minutes over any other option. <laughs> and it's not because of the shield dashing. You'll, you'll see why later. It, it uh, has a, a fun time killing things. In uh, the ABRSR category, it's actually important that he broke that rock there because we are going to be revisiting this area. Yeah. Oh, and I guess we should talk a little bit about what the category actually yeah. is uh, since we're, <laughs> we're here again. Um, so this uh, category is called... Uh, all bosses, all relics, uh, those two things should be pretty self-explanatory. And then save Richter. Um, he did that nice. by the way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the hard part of the run is now over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all cruising from here. So yeah, uh, all bosses, all relics, save Richter, uh, shortened ABRSR. And um, it's essentially a 100% category of the game. Uh, normally the 100% category would also include map collection, but... 
Uh, because that involves uh, bonking into corners of rooms a lot and uh, generally being uh, kind of boring to run, uh, people prefer to run uh, this version of it instead. Yeah, this category basically shows off all the uh, movement stuff, all the important like items to collect uh, as far as progression and stuff. So it's, it's really, really fun. And like I said uh, in the interview before this, um, there's a lot of unique movement that we're going to get to see in this run that only exists in this run, so that's really cool. Same with like some unique glitches and stuff. Yeah, it's really important to wait for that spittle bone, because if you get poisoned here, it actually wastes a lot of time. Um, while I'm going through this section here, we uh, call it the clock rush because the entire like goal of the first eight or so minutes of the game is to get into the clock room uh, to get into the Coliseum. And uh, during this section, a lot of the time, uh, most runs have what's called an experience route. So um, I'm going to be going for a double kill here on Sorga and Gaibon. I did not get it. Um, I was one frame off, so. so. There's uh, five seconds or so wasted, I think. Yeah. But essentially, the idea is uh, if I stacked the levels properly on um, Sorga and Gaibon, I'd get a different experience value by killing them on the same frame as opposed to alternating frames. So I'm going to get an extra level up here which I would normally uh, not necessarily skip this level up. I would just get it at a different point. But overall, it skips like three or so level up animations, which yeah. saves the, a bit of time. The reason it works is because um, Alucard's level compared to the enemy levels that you're fighting is what determines how much experience you get. So it's on a curve. And um, when you try and kill as little as possible outside of bosses, you end up skipping a ton of level up animations just because uh, you spike upward. Okay, this is going to be the first like route change that uh, you would notice if you're more familiar with other uh, Symphony of the Night categories. You never really come down here for any reason uh, other than to collect this relic right here, which is the Spirit Orb. Uh, it's mostly useless. It just lets you see how much damage you're doing. <laughs> By the way, we haven't mentioned it yet. So, uh, but uh, thank you for donating ten thousand dollars for the ABRSR incentive. Yeah, that yeah, was pretty that was, that was They got really met great. really fast. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, this category is really cool. A lot better than all bosses, yeah. I think. Not that all bosses is bad. And shout outs to everyone who uh, acknowledged the orb there. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Nice. The flea men were nice to me. They're probably like the most random enemy that you have to deal with uh, early on. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so a lot of this section is mostly just like general shield dash movement, killing enemies that are in my way. Um, I'm going to be skipping a handful of enemies just to set up the experience route still. Uh, actually, now that I use the double kill, I think I just kill everything. Dude, since the uh, record's done, you should use our... Uh... Oh, wait, you didn't get the armor on the second one, did you? Oh, I, I think. Yeah, really I was going to say on too. Doppelganger, but yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you have uh, extra donations right now, I think uh, this is a good, as good a time as any. Yeah, this is the best time. I've got a lot of them coming in. We've got $10 from Augie Jr. who says, Dragon Blitz is up to bat with a Castlevania game, ready to whip the crowd into a frenzy as we sink our teeth into this gaming block. No mooning and groaning from the viewers here, just good old speedruns. Uh, I think the stake into Dracula's heart made me have a bigger groan, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> We've got $100 from Miserable Little Pile of Secrets, who says, the aesthetic, the music, everything about this series is great and inspired me to start making a game with some friends. Slay the vampire and bloody the tears through Bloodlines Divine, for it is Castlevania time. So this is a uh, second boss coming up here, Doppelganger. He's honestly really tough. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Yeah. Close call. I'm proud of you. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's a really intense staring contest, and um, yeah, he blinked. But yeah, it's, um, that fight is, I don't know if it's like an Easter egg or something like that, but you're able to use the stopwatch on this version of Doppelganger as well as the one that comes up later in the run. Uh, and they just stand there and yeah. don't do anything. Knowing a lot of other things about this game, probably just an oversight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Since we've been doing randomizers, we know that you can um, get him uh, like petrified by using the uh, stone sword. Oh, yeah. That, like that's that. so funny. <laughs> yeah. Also, shout outs to Soten Randomizer. Super fun. Yeah. So, uh, you should all check it out sometime. If, you're, if you really like this game, the, the new randomizer is like really robust and it's been worked on since April. Made by Wild Mouse. Yep. Yeah, shout out to Wild Mouse. Shout out. 
I think we can go back to donations for a little bit. Absolutely. I've got $25 from Unintendo, who says, all these Castlevania punsters are such alu cards. They're killing me, and now I'm coming down with Richter Mortis. Let's whip up some support for MSF and all the great runners. That's deep. <laughs> this, this level for that one. <laughs> We've also got $25 from Stretch Dude, who asked, how does Dracula empty his pool? Through the Castle Drania. Good try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, just like a small optimization of movement. It's actually faster to use the wolf through this section, uh, just because it retains its momentum in the air while Alucard does not. Oh, yeah, that I happens. thought you were going to get the full thing. Maybe one day. It's actually faster to retransform here if I'm not on the right cycle for the clock. Oh, that guy almost hit me, and then it would have made me look like an idiot because I get to do this jump. There we go. So this is the clock room we've been talking about. Yeah, the, the wolf has all kinds of uh, crazy jumps you can do depending on what part of the dash you do it on and also off of slopes, uh, like when you grab the garnet, which he'll be using later. Um, that was just dashing up the slope, and then you get a really high jump out of it. Yeah, this whole detour is so we can go into the Coliseum. Uh, kind of unintended, the, uh, this route. Um, it's technically glitchless, but uh, the game intends you to get the Leap Stone before entering this area. Yeah. So I'm technically underleveled, but I have the best gear in the game, so it doesn't matter. Um, this is a fun manip. <laughs> Yeah, doing the same exact inputs there, the Blade Masters are always going to do the same thing. They're going to slide under you, which is really nice. Um, There's an easier manip you can do where you just walk through the room and they just jump over you, yeah. like every time. A little bit slower, though. Yeah. So by skipping this cutscene, uh, the AI on these enemies doesn't, like, load at the right time, so they just kind of stand there for a little bit and you can wail on them. Honestly, a common theme through this run. <laughs> <laughs> the bosses don't really put up a fight. Yeah, the, the boss fights are suggestions, I think. So yeah, the, the main reason for doing this um, route is because, uh, one, you get um, missed immediately so that you can get bat, because that's really the ultimate movement form, that, as you'll be seeing soon. And then also the shield rod, uh, which in combination with the owl card shield he has, uh, is going to save a ton of time. Cool. Yeah, you're going to see it right after I do a little bit of shopping, but... Um... Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll explain the shop, I guess, once uh, we get there. Or if you want to start explaining yeah. it now. Um, so he's going to grab the fairy here off of a, a dive kick setup. Um, these books can be really trolly sometimes, too. But he grabbed a potion just to give himself invincibility to account for that. Yeah. Um, and once he has the fairy active, um, if you stand in place, it has a voice clip that plays. And he's going to time it so that the voice clip plays over the shop cutscene. And that allows him to uh, pause during the cutscene, which normally isn't possible. And uh, since he can pause, he can then equip a garnet as he's selling it. And it underflows the garnets, and he's going to have 255 of them to sell. I'm interested. So also, you'll see that right now. What? There's also an optimization that Dragon Blitz came up with called garnet mashing, where it's actually faster to mash right here than to hold it. Uh, saves a couple seconds, actually. Yeah, okay. even with that little mess up there, like, it's still going to save time. Cool. Uh, here we open, uh, get the jewel of open because it is a uh, relic, as well as a few other items that are going to help us throughout the rest of the game. Mana Prism uh, lets me have basically as much mana as I want. Um, there, I just did the Shield Rod spell, yeah. which allows me to, well, you'll see coming up what the Shield Rod spell does. Um, just pay attention to when I pull my shield out next. Yeah, Duplicator and uh, Mana Prisms is really what is going to let uh, most of the time be saved in this run because uh, once he gets the bat, he's going to have uh, essentially a Shine Spark. <laughs> okay. So I use the Mana Prism to have some invincibility going through there, but while the shield is active, um, now that I have the Shield Rod out, uh, it does 255 damage uh, like every other frame or something like that. It completely melts bosses. You get healed during it, and you're invincible while this, uh, you're inside of enemies doing it. So it's a little broken. Oh, no. Okay, if I fail this but get the clip, I'll be happy. So coming up, I'm going for a pretty intense floor clip. Um, we'll see if I can get it. I'm going to be using the map to help, like, buffer the frames because it's very yeah. frame-specific. There's multiple frame-perfect inputs in here. 
Oh, one oh. frame off. There we go. Second try. Nice. Not bad. And even on second try there, that's as fast as like any other route you can do through the library. So yeah, I'm, I'm breaking even. If I get it first try, I save like four to six seconds depending on movement. Nice. So this is another small route change coming up. Um, so far, this has been pretty similar to all bosses, um, ex ex except for some of the relics that we picked up, like the Spirit Orb. Um, but coming up, I'm going to be just kind of doing a little bit different movement than you're used to seeing. Uh, which relic is this again? Fire of Bat. Fire of Bat. Uh, yeah. we, don't, we don't use it at all. It's <laughs> completely Most useless. Most of the relics you aren't really going to use. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, They're here for collecting, yeah. and that's about it. So I'm going out of my way to collect it. Also, here. most of these I only remember what they are now because of Randomizer. <laughs> <laughs> Another shout out to Randomizer. <laughs> Soten.io. Yeah, go to Soten.io, crash the server or whatever you guys want to do. Um, but yeah, this, uh, oh no, I was about to say this movement's really hard, and then I screwed it up. Um, especially in the next room. Here I'm going to be doing a damage boost off of this Harpy, which allows me to Mana Prism there, which sets up my mana for this next room. I'm going to go for it. I didn't oh. get it. Yeah. <laughs> I can get the backup, though. Yeah, you can do some really fancy uh, wing smashing with the bat. Yeah, that backup doesn't waste that much time. It's like a second. But, like, the fastest way to get through that room versus, like, how most people learn the room is, like... I know, a difference of like almost three seconds. Yeah, it's pretty huge. But yeah, every time he's doing uh, one of these things we call wing smashes where the bat's going really fast, um, that's actually a three-quarter circle input. And then he has to hold and uh, let go of the jump button. Uh, so he actually has to chain that input over and over while manipulating the direction of the bat. And it's actually a lot more technical yeah, than you would expect. 60 frames or 61 frames, I think, technically, but essentially an entire second uh, in between doing the input. So a lot of the times, oh, nice shield. We're not going <laughs> to see it, but it's a cool one to get. Uh, but yeah, timing it so you maximize the amount of wing smashes you get per screen or per um, mana prism cast, I guess, is the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, you basically want to uh, do it as late as possible every time. So you're, most runners are probably going to give themselves like a 15 frame window at most. Okay, coming up is a pretty precise trick. It's frame perfect, but got it first try. Nice. Let's go. Uh, so the simplest way to explain this is that the chapel doorways are very poorly coded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I still don't know exactly why that one works the way that it does, but um, yeah, it's really nice and convenient because there's like a, a statue blocking the, your way from coming in on uh, to Orlox's quarters from this side. So we just skip that statue. Yeah, and right there, um, a really cool thing is he was using the terrain, the ceiling in that case, and it actually does give the bat an extra boost going upward. Uh, so you'll see that all over the place too. Just one of the cool things of using the bat in this game. Uh, that's front sliding. It's mostly for swag, but there are a couple times. Hey, I mean, if, if you're running glitchless, that's the tech right there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a handful of places where it saves time. Oh, we're, we're clapping for the front sliding, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the actual interesting part, not the we're, bosses. We're, we're not clapping for the bosses. <laughs> um, another thing that I don't think we really described, uh, the bat kicking and like the momentum preservation with the bat. So anytime you transform into bat, if you have some horizontal momentum, the game kind of stores it during the transition uh, into bat, so you kind of like slide with uh, whatever horizontal momentum you have, which is really useful. Yeah. Every time he's transforming into bat, he's gaining extra ground while uh, doing that. Yeah, so either I'm going to dive kick and then immediately cancel it with the transformation like this, or I'm going to back dash. It just depends on like the exact positioning that I want uh, for a given situation. I'm going to go for this exactly once. Uh, oh. That's frame perfect, and the frame that you have to do it on is dependent on your positioning, which is very difficult to set up. So There's a lot of tricks like that in this run where you go for it exactly once, and if you get it, you save six seconds. Otherwise, you just keep going. Yeah, uh, and we're coming up on another glitch pretty soon, too. Uh, the first castle pretty much is nonstop glitches once you get the bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is probably the most intense like part of the run. 
Like the second castle, it's like a lot of more standard movement, not as many glitches. Yeah. Here we get another important movement item, the gravity boots, which lets you do a big upward jump. Yeah, we oh. don't use it right away, but you're gonna see it pretty soon. Also another fighting game input, you have to do down up and then jump. So get another thing. Here's another wolf book. This one is mandatory. This one's first try though. Nice. Let's go. That was really good. Yeah. Uh, the way that the map buffer works is there, it's not like Ocarina of Time buffering where you have like a whole second to like wait to try and buffer it. Everything is done in real time. So whenever I buffer an input, uh, I have to cancel the map and then open the map again within one frame if I want it to progress by one frame. So if I miss the input by one frame, uh, I end up just like not being able to do it, which is what ended up happening when I did the first wolf clip. But yeah. The point of that clip is to get the, whole, the Holy Glasses, by the way, because one of the requirements is to save Richter. Uh, and yeah, get no, no way to glitch doing that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a relic. Yeah, we have to go out of our way. It, it makes more sense to get it on this uh, particular library visit. Um, there's, you visit the library three times. Here you have enough movement to collect it quickly, but you don't have all of your movement options unlocked, which uh, is what we're going to go do right now, is get the rest of the wolf movement options, which allow for a couple of interesting uh, floor clips that I'll be going for. Yeah, including one in the library, which is why he gets the fairy scroll now, so he can attempt that later. Yeah, that's another one of those clips where you try it once, if you get it, you save four seconds, otherwise you just move on. It only loses about a second going for it. Nice front slides. Oh yeah, those ones are the ones that save time. Um, this is another interesting part that you don't see in any other category. We are going to be revisiting the uh, alchemy lab as well as the outer or the uh, entrance. Entrance, yeah. Yeah, to get these relics, and there's really no point in coming back here in any other category, just because whatever you get from here is um, not useful. Well, except for zero bosses. Yeah. I was going to bring up Zero Bosses. Yeah, that one's but, mandatory, uh, but yeah. <laughs> with Zero Bosses, you don't have as much fun movement tech, so. Uh, that's not how that works. Yeah, I was trying to do a back dash, and I ended up getting uh, that input eaten by the door. Wow. The door is hungry. It happens sometimes. Please. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes the Wing Smash inputs will be a little finicky depending on, like, what you input before going for the uh, Wing Smash, so... Yeah, so I'd say up until we uh, end up wrapping back around to do the next glitch, uh, there's actually time for probably two donations right now. Sure thing. We've got $100 from Francisco Evil Bujo Carmona, who says, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is one of my favorite Castlevania games, so I just had to donate during this run. Keep doing an amazing job, and good luck to Dragon Blitz with the run. And we've got $5 from Jared M. Ward, who says, first time here at GDQ, and had to donate during my favorite series. But I have to say all these puns are leaving my ears in Castlepania. No. That's like the worst way to go through that room, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you can still do one more. Sure. Uh, $5 from Tesseract, who's apparently got a joke for you. Says a new gopher was working on the set of a TV show. His job was basically to bring the actors whatever they want. He asked, how will I know how to do my job properly? And the director said, the cast will train you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was... He, the... Obviously, they're spending the whole run thinking of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you kill the bird? What did he do to you? He hits me on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> he actually does. That's not in practice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the, uh, I guess, fastest movement tech uh, just in terms of general horizontal movement. Um, you, you'll not see it that often, though, because the transformation actually makes it take more time in most cases. But, uh, yeah. This is another skip similar to Death Skip. It's a reverse shift line, which is basically underflowing your X coordinates so that when you enter the next room, you wrap around, and that skips over the wall like that. Nice. Yep. I was having a little bit of trouble with that one in practice. I'm happy I got that first try. This is another area that you don't see in any other category because it's just to get this relic, yeah. which allows you to get a different relic. <laughs> yeah, there's actually... A, it, the route probably would be different if you could glitch to get the other relic uh, that you use this one for, but yeah. I, I don't think there's any way to do that, really. No, that wall Not is quickly. impenetrable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
If you've ever played this on a PlayStation, don't he, he's going he's going about ten times faster than you ever would because of the lag. <laughs> yeah, this area doesn't do well on PlayStation because of the lag. Shout out to Ritual of the Night Movement Tech. <laughs> you can do it for free though, dude. You just like hold down the whole time, I think. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, I essentially was waiting for that Donkey Kong to uh, throw the barrel and break the bridge for me because I'm going to be returning to that area later. You yeah. technically can skip that, but no one's ever been able to do it and it's really stupid. <laughs> it requires like uh, the experience route that we were talking about earlier. You'd have to carry an experience route all the way over into this area. Oh, I hope you guys don't like the music for this area because <laughs> there's going to be no music, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I just have to ride this boat, so this is a great time for donations as well in this awkward silence. <laughs> Absolutely, I love awkward silence. We've got $25 from World Warrior 13 who asks, are you being misled by a large old stone structure? That I might am. be a castle play in ya. Ooh. Yeah, that one hurt. That one, that one <laughs> that's a little, Ooh. that's a little suspect. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> We've got $15 from 4G who asks, how does Dracula donate blood? Through his Castlevania. Wait, that's just, that's just the word. That's... <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Yeah, this is probably one of the harder wing smashing sections, just because you have to keep a very precise horizontal, um, or sorry, vertical distance between the water and the ceiling, because if you're too high up, you'll get zipped down because of the terrain that we talked about earlier and how that works. And if you're too low, you enter the water, and the bat... Uh, can't be in the water, it just immediately untransforms you back into Alucard, so. Alright, so now he's gonna attempt to despawn the door when he kills this boss uh, that normally closes. Um, and since it never spawned, he can leave the room, come back in, and then it's there all of a sudden and zips him downward. Saves quite a bit of time. Here's another uh, floor clip that I'm gonna be going for exactly once. Uh, there's kind of a setup for it, but it doesn't really, like, it helps, but it doesn't help. It's just, this is probably the dumbest clip in the game, honestly. Uh, I missed the setup, whatever. We're still well, going for it. Go for it. I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it would zip you down this room really fast. Yeah, it saves, like, another one of those, like, four-second time saves. Yeah. This part of the route's, like, so weird. It, it, there's no clean way to route it, really. No. Given all the places you have to go in the castle. Yeah, this is the best route that we've come up with. There's an alternate route that we don't... I don't think it saves time, but it's been theorized to be possibly a time save where you get uh, gravity boots later and you do this section first before getting gravity boots. Uh, that's the wrong button. <laughs> now available um, on Xbox almost, Live. <laughs> almost quit the game there for a second. <laughs> yeah, my least favorite part about the Xbox 360 controller is there's this big button in the middle that nev you never want to press when you're speedrunning. Okay, we're going for the... Same clip, but on the other side. This one saves a little bit more time if I get it. Never mind. Dang. It just skips this entire screen falling. I just end up at the bottom yeah. immediately, so. That's fine. There's still plenty more glitches he can show off. <laughs> Should I show off the Cerberus one? Yeah, dude. Okay. Cerberus, Toadstool, just everything. Got a card. <laughs> Although if I fail the Cerberus one, I'm going to feel bad. Don't feel bad. I don't know. Come up with a pause buffer set up. You're good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Uh, it's a very precise positioning. It clips you into the floor. Whatever. We'll just kill this guy. There's another clip coming up. It's fine. Uh, we come down here because there's a boss that we need to kill as well as we need to collect this demon card. You want to do spike room blind just to show it off? <laughs> <laughs> With all the randomizer practice we've gotten on it? Yeah. Uh, there you are. <laughs> That's the fastest <laughs> one I think I've ever gotten. <laughs> uh, so if you do that clip in the menuing and all that, like, near frame perfectly, you probably save maybe a couple frames, if that. It probably loses time on average every time. But yeah. I always go for it. You have to have, like, instant menus in order to make it faster. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the few sections where moving as the wolf uh, at full speed saves time. Wow, nice hit. He, he wants a raise. He's doing it his uh, 
best job to stop me there, but that's another boss gone. That's all the bosses in the first castle taken care of. That's all the relics in the... Oh, that's actually not all the relics. I forgot. We're going to be stopping. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a couple left. Yeah. Going for this floor clip. Got nice. it. Hey! We didn't want it. That's... So all the failed ones, I've made up all that time right there. So that's <laughs> nice. Uh, wing smash, please. But yeah, um, collecting the last few relics, we're going to be saving Richter, which is nice. Every other category just skips him, but we care about Richter in this category. He's important to us. Well, glitchless, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, no, but in that one, we don't care about him. This is the only category we care about him. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> He's in the title. So. Oh, Flea Riders are scary. Thankfully, I did that mostly fine. Um, when you do the gravity jump from the gravity boots, you are invincible a little bit. So I use that to my advantage to not get hit there. Oh, hello. You don't want to pick that up, but it's a little bit slower. <laughs> Just you have to wait for that animation, but it's not that bad. Here we're going to be equipping the Holy Glasses. Oh, I, I thought you were, like, setting up a Richter skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, save Richter. That'd be really mean. <laughs> it would save time because this cutscene's a little slow. Oh, that's saving Richter, by the way. The Shaft Orb has exactly 10 health, and no matter what you hit it with, you do one damage to it. So you do a setup there where Soul Seal does eight hits, and you do a uh, Summon Spirit right before, and you hit it twice with the Summon Spirit while the uh, Soul Steal's going on, and you basically just melt the, the yes. thing. Here, I have to re-equip Dragon Helm as well as re-apply the Shield Rod spell to the shield because that cutscene actually cancels the effects of the Shield Rod spell because it reloads Alucard in a way where, um, depending on how it's loaded, I, I don't know exactly why. Well, I mean, it basically resets them to yeah. a basic state. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like as if you were loading a game at that point, you know? Yeah. Here, I'm opening this teleporter for later because I'm going to be revisiting this area. Yeah, so there's a, a lot less uh, glitchiness in the second castle. Uh, a lot of it is just trying to get clean movement, um, still having boss fights as suggestions. But, yeah, uh, I think um, there can probably be a... Oh, oh, are we going for this? Yeah, we're going for it. It's gone. <laughs> Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, you know, it just randomly happens. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think there's time for a couple donations still. Absolutely. We've got $50 from Floof, who says, keep up the Castlevania puns, please. I think my mind can only take so much. Well, at least we got a break from it with that comment. Right. $25 from Renokie, who says, My husband's love and passion for Castlevania has been rubbing off on me. There's so much story and lore, though, and I sometimes feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew. Good luck to all runners, and thank you for this event. $10 from Vicarious Vice, who asks, Our Dracula doesn't see the point in keeping mirrors in his castle since he could never see himself using them. Okay, okay, okay. It was a little more clever I, than the other one. I, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny that we get the bat because, uh, as it turns out, Alucard doesn't need the bat in order to fly. Man, bat! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of I see you, are we playing your game in English? Uh, that'll oh, be decided no. when this is over. Uh-oh. I think. That's what they told me. We're go go for there. Japanese voices. <laughs> you heard the man. <laughs> Showtime. <laughs> yeah, coming up here, we're going to be... Um, collecting one of the optional relics, I guess, if you're playing through the game casually. It's Force of Echo, which allows um, the Echo, which we didn't even show off because it's only useful for um, 
It's, it's not useful, actually, now that I think about it. Can, can you show it off mid-wing smash? Uh, no, but I can show off the fire bat, I think, mid-wing wing, wing smash. <laughs> Does that work? I'll try it. We're just trying things at this point. Uh, I've seen the task do it. I think I can do it. <laughs> Speaking of which, there is a really good task of this category by Forgone Moose. Yeah. Uh, one of the most entertaining tasks in the Castlevania series. It's my favorite uh, task of this game, so yeah. I definitely recommend checking it out. I like the low percent leap stone task a little more. But, uh, <laughs> you really like seeing pause, pauses over and over again, yeah. don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember that section where I messed up a lot before? I didn't mess up this time in the inverted section, so that's nice. Proud of you. Yeah. There's Force of Echo. Um, next time I do a wing smash, I'll try and do the fire bat wing smash, which I might have to do here. Nope, just kidding. Um, funny thing about wing smash inputs, anytime you... Uh, hit a level up or a screen transition, it resets whatever inputs you're doing as far as like any command inputs for wing smashing or any other like spell or something like that. So if I'm about to hit a screen transition, I need to make sure I've either already done the input that I want or I'm like buffering part of the input and then finish it during the uh, end of the screen transition. Same thing goes for level ups. Yeah, although in this category, sometimes you can have inconsistency with the level up, so yeah. it might catch you by surprise. Uh-oh. Gaibon's very strong. He wants revenge for earlier. Ah, uh, didn't get the quick kill. This one was best. That is that. This is the Echo, by the way. It lets you see in the dark, but there's only one dark room in the game. <laughs> and if you know what you're doing, you don't even need to see in it. And then Force of Echo is, hey, we still have more relic slots we can fill up. <laughs> so, <laughs> just put something there. Let me scream at you. <laughs> yeah. It lets the Echo do damage, which is useful in Randomizer. Lets you do item checks quickly. <laughs> Shout out to Randomizer the, again. The Ben Strats. <laughs> Go Ben Otten. Shout out to Ben Otten, who streams Soda and Rando for like 15 hours a day, every day. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> like, he, he's a god. Hey, I, I don't he, know what to say. He's playing Bloodstained. This last week, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. him stream Soda and Rando like yesterday. Oh, he's no. oh. back to it. It's, it's over. It's over. Right. It's over. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he has the most hours in Soda and Rando out of anybody on the oh, planet. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, not even close. This is Gallimoth. Yeah, he's the quote unquote hardest boss. Yeah, I don't see why. So the shield actually does give you invincibility too, like when it's out, out and uh, hitting something, which is just. The weirdest uh, buff they could give it, like. <laughs> yeah. I think it, normally you find uh, the Alucard shield in the caverns of the second castle. So I, I guess by that point, if you've reached there, they're just like, please, just beat the game already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And what do you get for all of your hard work for defeating Galamoth? You get Gas Cloud, of course, which is... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, it's you, a Gas Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> your mist does damage now. That's it. It can be useful, but we won't really be using it for anything. Again, useful in randomizer, not in this category. Well, if you'd gotten a Medusa shield drop, you could do the uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the free Dracula kill. <laughs> Literally the rarest drop in the game. Let me just go get that real quick. Yeah, yeah. There's like at least two Medusa heads you can run into before the end. Uh oh, there we go. But yeah, we're finally using that teleporter that I opened earlier in the uh, second castle. Little cute front slide there. But yeah, coming up is uh, Medusa. She drops another uh, relic that's required for obviously getting all relics. Um, there's only seven relics in the second castle. Five are dropped by bosses, and then the other two I've already collected, which are the Force of Echo and the Gas Cloud. And uh, really, really big Castlevania fans would already know this, but a uh, cute factoid, if you will, is that all of the bosses in the second castle that drop relics are the Castlevania 1 bosses. Doing any percent strats, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just to show it off. Did you grab Medusa's relic? <laughs> I did. <laughs> that's that's what I always skip. <laughs> yeah, that's one that I forget as well. Because it, um, on PSX, it's, you have to exit the room and then re-enter in order for it to spawn or something like that. So sometimes I'll leave the room and then forget about it. <laughs> 
So coming up is the last relic we're going to be acquiring for the run. Shame I don't have axe armor for this. Invalid run. I know. This guy takes forever to get off the screen, by the way. He's a sore loser. Like, I already beat you. Go ahead and go. He's <laughs> trying, man. That was the day they learned to code uh, that effect in the game. <laughs> They're like, well, we got to make use of this. Guys, look at this Thanos snap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Coming up, we have the CV3 trio. Um, the, the fake CV3 trio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... They're actually an interesting boss fight, uh, in a way. I don't know how to, like... Since you're having to fight three at once, you can't just melt the boss immediately. You have to worry about, like, where they're going to be and how you knock back one into the other one in order to, like, continue the combo kind of deal. So uh, you'll see in a second. It's one of the more intricate boss fights, if, if this game really has those. Yeah, I was gonna say, as intricate as you can get for still basically one-shotting the bosses. <laughs> yeah, so we just do a sweep from left to right. Did you see how intricate that was? Yeah. <laughs> really complicated. Uh, I think we should go back and explain it again. And Beelzebub's one of the core looking kills, I think. Yeah, this one, uh, shout out to Talek Zealot for a lot of things, but one of which being this uh, quick kill on uh, Beelzebub. So he originally came up with this strat because if you use mana prisms on uh, PlayStation while other effects are going on, it lags like crazy. And he originally uh, ran on PlayStation, so he was coming up with lag reduction strats for uh, all bosses, and he came up with this strat for killing Beelzebub. I screwed Ooh. it up. Dang it. Sorry. Sorry, Talek. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Okay. That's kind of what the old strat kind of looked like, except without getting hit. And even though uh, he has all the relics, it's still going to be slower to wait on the clock to open, so uh, he's just going to skip it. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't get the front slide. Run invalidated. Yeah, so this is the same glitch. This is actually maybe the first glitch we're seeing in the second castle, but other than graphical ones. Um, but yeah, this is the same as the death skip, uh, getting to the exact point where the screen starts to scroll, and then uh, making the screen position underflow, essentially just put you on the other side of it. Nice. So... Uh, in this case, though, he had to time a bat transformation perfectly because the ceiling zipping him downwards, and he would have fallen right into that guardian had he not uh, done everything right. Yeah. Certain categories, if you miss that, you die to the guardian, and it's really sad. We're probably a little too high of a level to die to him. Yeah, I don't even think he'd big toss you. I think it'd be a, a little Storm poke. Fight, yeah. Uh, so this is the end of the game. Uh, the final two bosses, Shaft and Dracula. It's kind of more of the same. We're just going to kill him real fast. But yeah, um, this has been fun. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out, I guess, during this time while we're uh, wrapping up the game. Huge shout out to the certain community. You guys are awesome. Um, there's like specific individuals where like if it wasn't for them, like helping me learn the game, I just would have never like gotten into speedrunning it. So huge shout outs to TurboDog702. Huge shout outs to Rom Scout back here being a huge inspiration. Huge shout outs to uh, Forgone Moose. Um, there's way too many to like even name. <laughs> Talek Zilla, like we said before. Um, Mateco for being such a top runner, great competition. Like literally anybody. Um, and that's time. That's time. Time. Subscribe to him and that's a muscle low 41. So, low 41. That? Yeah, it, it would have been a low. Low 41? Well, low. maybe a mid 41. Maybe, yeah, like a low mid 41. With yeah, with the reset, that's close to record. I yeah. need to retime it, but that might be record. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just uh, say it's world record. Woo. No, I'm not doing this again. No, 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 no. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to be tweeting out a link to our Discord if you guys want to follow the or join the Soten Discord. I highly recommend it. You get to learn the game, uh, chat with cool people that like the game as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Also play Rando. Yeah, play Rando. We have a dedicated section in the Discord for Rando. So if you just want to play the randomizer, we can help you get started with that as well. 
So, yeah, thank you guys so much. Eternity. Lisa, forgive me. I think it's there. That was an incredible run of Soten from Dragon Blitz. I'm going to say one of the top ten games of all time, maybe top five, really, really good. We've still got more donations coming in. We've got $250 from Work Metaphor, who says, love the event. I try to give every year. You're all amazing. I agree. We've got $250 from Jonathan235, who says, it's that time of the year again when the summer heat is replaced with the summer hype. It is comforting to know that a community can be so supportive, inclusive, and committed to being amazing human beings. To all the runners, staff, and fans of GDQ, as well as the selfless people serving Doctors Without Borders, you're breathtaking. Near the end of that run, they referenced the Castlevania Portrait of Ruin language bid war that we've got going on. Uh, you probably have mere moments to still donate to that. Right now, Japanese is in the lead with 1,020 compared to English's $800. So if you would like to read the extensive lore of a World War II era Castlevania uh, in English, you're going to have to get those donations in ASAP. We've got $200 from Fermi Fox, who says, this donation is long overdue. I have been watching for years and I'm now at a point where I can finally contribute to this great cause. I have just earned my PhD and a lot has changed in my life since childhood. But this event reminds me of the two things that have remained constant, which is my love for helping others and of course, Castlevania. Shout out to all the runners and the staff that makes this all possible. You're all amazing. All right, I've got one last one for you. $15 from Tranquil, who says, what do you call being addicted to building castles? Castle mania. You tried. All right, I think that's going to be the end of my time here coming up. I'm going to be followed up by an eternal enigma here on the mic. Uh, but I'm going to push you over to a quick Twitch ad, and we'll be back in just one second. Take care.
All right, everybody. Hello. And Eternal Enigma here to take you through these next two runs. Coming up next, uh, we have VB with Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. We're getting set up for that in just a moment. Before we get to that, uh, in just a moment when it's all ready to go, uh, Scent is going to have another segment for prizes with us. But for right now, I uh, just want to remind everybody that Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch, is brought together to benefit Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is an international independent man medical humanitarian organization that delivers emergency aid to people affected by armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, natural disasters, and exclusion from healthcare in over 70 countries in 2018. On any given day, thousands of individuals representing dozens of nationalities can be found providing assistance to people caught in crises all around the world. They are doctors, nurses, logistics experts, administrators, epidemiologists, lab laboratory technicians, easy for me to say, mental health professionals, and others who work together in accordance with MSF's guiding principles of humanitarian action and medical ethics. The the organization received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1999. All right, now let's hit a few of your donations that are still coming in. We have a $25 donation from Big Sis 25 that says, please put this towards the Prey Glitch Exhibition. And speaking of the Prey Glitch Exhibition, that incentive will be hit at $7,500, and right now it is currently $3,967. So we still have a little bit of ways to go for that, but that is the next big challenge uh, coming up. So if you want to see the Prey Glitch Showcase, we're going to need about $3,500 more dollars towards that. We have a $28.48 donation from Farable. It says, hello, Farable here. First time donating to this event. Many more to come. This one goes to Prey Glitches because I want something crazy to watch. Oh, and greetings from the Netherlands. All right, so right now we're going to toss it over to Scent, who's going to show off some more prizes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Games Done Quick, Summer Games Done Quick 2019. Uh, my name is Scent, and as always, I'm here to talk to you guys about some great prizes we have. I'd actually like to introduce you guys to uh, someone who's going to be helping me out all week. Um, I've and been told dark. that uh, we, we found a dragon during the pre-show or something. I'm, I'm not really sure what that's about, but I mean... Frankly, it, it's not the worst assistant they've ever given me. I mean, we did have that shark last year. Kind of wonder what that shark's up to, actually. Wonder, wonder if he ever recovered from that firing. Yes, Chompers. Now that I've killed Prize Man, I can now kill fun and rule GDQ for good. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 pro it's probably not. <laughs> the laugh is still going. That's how unimportant it is. Don't worry about it too much. Anyway, guys, I'd like to introduce you to the other side of my body, uh, my assistant for the weekend, and I cannot stress enough that he chose his name himself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sir, Sir Prizes. I know, it's, it's, it's terrible. All right, all right, so surprises, can you, can you give me a hand here? Can you help me show off some of these prizes to the people at home? Is that something you think you can do? Yeah, see, look, look, he's excited for it. Great, great. Let's, let's talk to the people about some of the stuff we got here. Um, 
So in front of me, we have all kinds of great items that I'm having trouble picking up. Uh, from our friend Jeremy Parrish, we have Nest Works Volume 1, 1985. Uh, guys, if you don't know the story behind the Nintendo Entertainment System and its revitalization of the video game market, it was a crazy time. The 80s were insane. I'm glad I wasn't around for them. But this book and its sequel, uh, Volume 2, they're going to tell you the whole story about the Nintendo coming to America and all of the uh, trials and tribulations it faced. Super cool, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Prey. All the prizes we're going to be talking about right now are from now until the end of Prey. So make sure to get those donations in. From uh, our friends over at the Bad Dudes, we have this beautiful uh, Bad Dudes Metroid Arrangement uh, CD. Super cool, $5 minimum donation. Uh, you know, Metroid, Super Metroid, Metroid 2, all great soundtracks. Right here, $5 minimum donation. Get that in. Ah, oh, let's uh, just pull, pull some other things. We have this beautiful little Castlevania friend from one of the favorite names I've ever gotten, the mayor of Super Video Game Land. Like, come on, that's, that's so good. Uh, shout outs to the mayor of Super Video Game Land for giving this in. Um, remember, as always, you can head over to gamesandquick.com, check out the tracker, it's gonna have all the information on minimum donations. Uh, can't remember this off the top of my head, but don't worry too much about it. Surprises, how do you like this thing? I'm gonna hold it up there. Yeah, he, he probably likes it. There we go. Yeah, see, look, he likes it. Good, good. Um, from our friends over at Studio Pin Pin, we have a couple of beautiful Hollow Knight prints here. We have uh, Hollow Knight escaping the uh, crystalline heart right there. And uh, then on the other side, we have Hollow Knight doing some, some fast travel on the bugs. Super cool game. I love the art style. love these prints. I believe both of them are a, a $5 minimum donation um, from now until the end of Prey. So make sure to get those donations in. Um, from our good friend uh, Joey Phillips, we have this beautiful set of four NES wood-burned coasters. They're functional, they look great. You got Mega Man, you got Samus, you got Link, you got I'm scrolling in the wrong direction. There's a Mario. Oh, yeah, look, look, yeah, he likes them too. He's, he's bringing out the boxes. I love it. Thank you. You know what? Do, do, do you have anything for me? Is there anything you want to talk about, Surprises? Can you give me something? Of, of, co of, course, of course you can't. You, you, you are a figment of my imagination, and this is my life now. So, you know, just go, go, go away. Go away. Come on. Stop, stop, stop sticking your tongue out at me. Go. I, I have a feeling this is going to be a really long and awkward week. Uh, one last great prize here from our good friend Pearl Pop. We have this absolutely beautiful, enormous Samus Perler. $15 minimum donation uh, from now until the end of Prey. This thing looks super cool. Guys, come on. Get your donations in for it. As a reminder, um, you have uh, everything that I just showed off on this table, $15. That's all you got to donate from now until the end of price. Just $15 donation, you could be entered into a chance to win all of this stuff, minus, of course, the mini fridge. Shout-outs to Red Bull, by the way, for sponsoring us. Mini fridge, not a prize. Um, and, of course, don't forget, we have our grand prize, the Hi Master Sword and Hylian Shield from our friend over at Heroic Replicas. Shout-outs to Dave. Thank you so much, Dave. That's a $200 donation, cumulative throughout the marathon. So, hey, donate $15 for these. Maybe you donated $30 yesterday for some of that cool stuff. And you're already a quarter of the way there to winning uh, an amazing replica Master Sword and Hylian Shield. That's going to be uh, about it for me. I'm not sure what that was. Don't worry about it. It's probably nothing. We're going to throw it back up to the front as we get ready for our next run, Castlevania Portrait of Ruin with VB. All right, excellent. Just a reminder, we are coming up very soon with VB running Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. We're getting set up for that. Speaking of which, we have a bid war coming up uh, for this game. It's for the language that it's going to be played in between Japanese and English. As of right now, Japanese is leading $1,020 to $825. We are in the nitty gritty of that one. And for the challenges, we mentioned the Prey Glitch so Showcase. We've uh, increased that one to $4,057 of $7,500. And also, we have another challenge coming up for the uh, bonus game one on Perfect Dark Any Percent. That one's going to be met at $30,000. And right now, it's sitting at $11,392. So we still have a ways to go for that. So don't forget that challenge as well. We have a $25 donation from Ben Visness, who says, I cannot possibly let a prey run go without a glitch showcase.
We have a $10 donation from Kiros, who says, How is there a bonus game incentive that hasn't been met yet? Let's get Perfect Dark in there. I also want to take a moment to talk to you about one of our sponsors, World 9 Gaming, from eSports to retro consoles, PCs to arcades. World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video game experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. With our mix of nostalgic and modern consoles, professional tournaments, and expansive game library, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. For information on booking and upcoming events, visit world9gaming.com and follow us on social media at World 9 Gaming. $10 donation from High Def Low Main who says, Hey VB, good luck on your run. All right, it looks like we 